today we are going to start anti fungal draft uh this is the classification that i have pasted for you so it's better if you guys would pause the video here uh, or maybe just take a screenshot okay and then um, uh, try to memorize this classification because this is very much important uh see the classes of drugs that are uh, treating the uh, antifungal diseases uh, the fungal diseases okay so the classes of antifungal drugs are allylamines um, antimetabolite azole and polyene right so we are going to talk about each one of them in more detail okay so starting up with the first one that is amphotericin b okay so the structure and mechanism of action it is naturally occurring polyene macrolide antibiotic produced by streptomyces nodosus so um amphotericin b is an antibiotic that binds to ergosterol a major component of fungal cell membranes so what happens is wait a minute so what happens is let's say this is a fungal cell membrane okay and if you know that in a normal human being cell membrane so you you would usually see cholesterol molecules right in order to maintain fluidity of the cell membrane but when we talk about fungus so instead of having a cholesterol they have this thing ergosterol okay so they would have this ergosterol okay here let's say okay so a major component of uh, fungi uh, cell membrane it forms amphotericin pores that alter membrane stability and allow leakage of intracellular contents so what happens is that you see ergosterol is here now um, let me use a different color for this wait a minute so let's say um amphotericin b comes okay and then it starts to open it up okay the um ergosterol component okay and form a pore which is named as amphotericin pore okay so what happens is as soon as the pore is being formed so the intracellular content would start to leak right so bacteria are non susceptible because they lack ergosterol so you see wherever it means amphotericin b would attack everything that would have ergosterol luckily we human beings we don't have ergosterol in our cell membrane neither do bacteria have right so they won't be affected okay so bacteria are not susceptible because they lack ergosterol amphotericin b binds to mammalian cholesterol with much lower affinity but this action may explain some of the adverse effect that this medicine have okay now pharmacological properties so amphotericin b is poorly absorbed from git why is that you see anything that is uh, that is uh, non polar then no anything that is polar it has difficulty right to get absorbed okay so amphotericin b is poorly absorbed it is effective by this route only on gi fungal infections amphotericin b is usually administered iv as a lipid formulation in order to enhance its uh, you know um, absorption it has poor penetration into the crs but can be administered uh, administered intrathecally for cns infections that do not respond to other agents so amphotericin b deoxycholate uh, that is a non lipid formulation has undergone several formulation improvements to reduce the incidence of side effects particularly nephrotoxicity that it offers then we have therapeutic uses so amphotericin b has a broadest spectrum of activity it is used to treat topical infections and before switching to a less toxic agent it is used for the initial treatment of severe systemic fungal infections including those caused by candida albicans histoplasma capsulatum 
uh, Cryptococcus pneumoformans and all of these, right? So in some cases, combination therapy with uh, uh, flucytosine is advantageous for the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis. So you see, it's very much important. You see, uh, guys, wait a minute. Baba, isn't it? Please. Thank you. Okay. So, Baba. Okay. So, uh, all right. What I was talking about was that amphotericin B, okay? It's an antifungal drug. And then I'm going to talk to you about this drug as well. That is flucytosin, okay? So this is used in combination by, uh, because it would enhance its uh, function, okay? So uh, cryptococcal meningitis, what is this? It is this, you see, first of all, I want you all to observe the normal meninges, right? So they're not inflamed, right? And uh, you can, e I think uh, very prominently, we do have difference here, right? However, the infected meninges, they're inflamed. So you see the infected cerebral fluid and swollen tissues all are there in the infected meninges, right? So that is why this fungal uh, infection is very much injurious. And in order to treat it, what do we do is this? We use amphotericin B along with flucytosin. Then we have adverse effects. The adverse effects of amphotericin B are significant. This agent causes chills, fever, in 50% of the patients and impaired renal function in 80% that may be irreversible. This uh, and guys, I tell you what, whenever we have irreversible effects, so that means with extreme precautions, we are going to take the medicine and, uh, you know, blood should be monitored and the renal function should be monitored whenever you are administering amphotericin B. Then we have amphotericin B may also produce anaphylaxis, thrombocytopenia, severe chills, pains, um, uh, kidney failure, hypertension, seizures, and even anemia, right? Okay, <laughs> then we have these medicines. And if you see, all of these medicines have conazole in the ending, right? Uh, itraconazole, ketoconazole, myconazole, fluconazole, then we have clotrimazole. And I tell you what, these medicines which are mentioned here, these are very, very, very commonly taken medicines, right? If any one of you have ever, um, uh, uh, ever encountered with any fungal infection, I'm sure you must have used any one of these medicines, right? Okay, so what are the general properties of these azoles? So these agents are azoles that selectively inhibit the cytochrome P50 mediated sterol demethylation of lansoterol to ergosetrol uh, in fungal membranes. So the affinity of mammalian P450 dependent enzyme is significantly lower. So these agents are broad spectrum antifungals. They also inhibit many gram positive bacteria and some protozoa. Then we have itraconazole. So itraconazole has replaced ketoconazole for the treatment of all mycosis. By the way, mycosis word is used generally for the diseases that are caused by fungus, okay? So except when cause is a factor, it is used topically for dermophyte infections and mucocutaneous canandidis and as a shampoo for um, seboric dermatitis. Okay. So you see here, uh -oh. you see here, this, this, um, this image which I have attached for you, this is a fungal infection, which is by the name of seboric dermatitis. Okay. So for this, you use the shampoo, okay, in order to treat it. Okay. Then we have itraconazole can be administered orally or topically. It is also used systemically for certain my mycosis. It does not pen penetrate the CSF. It is a drug of choice for the treatment, uh, for the disseminated 
blastomycosis. It is very useful for the treatment of histoplasmosis and for uh, per, uh, paracoxide, uh, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so this is paracoxidioidomycosis. Okay, so inhibition of cytochrome P50 metabolism increases or decreases metabolism of many drugs, which may lead to serious toxicities. It most common uh, it most commonly causes gastric upset in three to twenty percent of the patients. Itching, rashes, and headache are observed in one percent of the patients. This is histoplasma spores. Wait a minute. This we discussed. Okay, this is uh -huh. yeah, no? This one. So this is basically I wanted to share with you that uh, this is also a fungal infection. You know, uh, you can encounter whenever uh, you get exposed to the droppings of the bat or the birds, right? So if if you inhale it, so it can infect you, right? And along with that, this you see here, this is paracoxidomycosis. Okay. This is also because of the fungi, which is present in uh, USA in the southern region. So, uh, especially the people who are working as farmers over there, they usually develop the fungal infection. Okay. Then we have uh, myconazole, uh, clotrimazole, nystatin, uh, iconazole. Oxyconazole, silconazole, citraconazole, butoconazole, teraconazole. So, miconazole and clotrimazole are available for topical application. They are useful for many dermophyte infections, including tinea pedis, uh, ringworm, and cutaneous and vulva vaginal candidus. Then, uh, nystatin is used topically for candida infections of the skin, mucous, membrane, and intestinal tract. By the way, guys, this candida is referring to yeast, right? So, any of the infection caused by yeast is the candida infection, okay? All right. Then, we have fluconazole. It is available as IV or oral, or oral administration. Okay, so fluconazole is useful for oral uh, pharyngeal, isopharyngeal, and systemic candidiasis. It also penetrates the CSF. Baba, this is Baba. Give me water. Okay. Fluconazole also penetrates the CSF and is a drug of choice for short-term and maintenance therapy of uh, cryptococcal meningitis and for the treatment of disseminated histoplasmosis and uh, coccidomycosis. So adverse effects are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and reversible alopecia. Then we have uh, fluconazole, it inhibits uh, cytochrome. 34A and 2C9 uh, to increase plasma levels of numerous other drugs. Other drugs that we are going to talk about antifungal uh, in the antifungal category are uh, voriconazole and uh, posaconazole papaphilit. Among other activities, uh, voriconazole and uh, posaconazole are approved for invasive aspergillosis i'm sure you have studied about this in microbiology so they inhibit several cytochrome p450 liver enzymes to significantly decrease the clearance of numerous drugs so short-lived visual disturbances is reported for voriconazole but not posaconazole so dermatitis is common with voriconazole then we have Grisio, uh, 
So it binds to microtubules and prevents spindle formation and mitosis in fungi. It also binds filament proteins such as keratin. The drug accumulates in skin, hair, and nails. So it is administered as oral therapy for dermophyte infections. It's used for long-term therapy for hair and nail infection. It is generally well tolerated, uh, uh, rare CNS effects and hepatotoxicity occur. Then we have this drug, which we mentioned uh, in the earlier slides when we were talking about uh, flucistocin. So this drug is also discussed here. So flucistocin is actively transported into fungal cells and is converted into 5-fluorouracil uh, and subsequently to 5 fluoro deoxyuridulic uh, acid, which inhibits diimidylate synthase. Barbara, uh, go with the phone. Okay. And the spermidine and nucleic acid synthesis. By the way, guys, um, I think I did not attach. Wait a minute. Huh? I did not attach the... Uh, you know, th this will be pretty much clearer to you if you will go to Lippincott and then see the entire diagrammatic representation of what is written here. So it will be much clearer to you because all of the flowchart is written over there. Anyways, so human cells lack the ability to convert large amount of flu uh, cystosis into uracil form. Resistance develops rapidly. This is very important that re re resistance develops rapidly and limits its use. So, flucistocin is rarely used as a single drug, but it is often used in combination with other antifungal drugs. So, it is relatively non-toxic. A major adverse effect of this agent are depression of bone marrow function at high doses and hair loss. Uh, it can limit bone marrow effects as well. Then we have other drugs that is Tolnestate, naphtifene, terbinfene, butinafene. So these drugs are used topically for dermophy, uh, dermatophyte infection. Then we have caspofungin, mycofungin, um, anidolafungin. So these agents are large cyclic peptides that, that disrupt the fungal cell wall resulting in cell death. Um, okay, so they are useful in systemic candido infections. Caspofungin is used for salvage therapy in patients with severe invasive aspergillosis who fail therapy with amphotericin B. Thank you, everybody. Wait a minute.